Hello everybody. If you're new here, then welcome. This video is intended exactly for you. My name is Nalo, and this is going to be my 2023 Beginner's Investing Guide for CSGO. I'm going to go ahead and just get the sponsor out of the way, then we'll hop right into the video. This video is graciously sponsored by SkinsMonkey. This video is sponsored by SkinsMonkey. SkinsMonkey is a website that you can take all of the skins that you don't want anymore and upgrade them into something pretty cool. Even if the item that you trade for is on a trade hold, it'll be added to your SkinsMonkey backpack until it's ready to be withdrawn. When you use code Nalo, Below, there's actually two bonuses that you get on the site. The first one is an up to $5 bonus when trading skins, and the second one is an added 5% bonus when you're topping up your balance. And this is on top of the 30% bonus they already give you. And even if you don't have any skins to trade, SkinsMonkey actually has daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways that you can enter completely for free with a variety of ways to gain more entries. So check out this great site, SkinsMonkey, by using my link in the description below for these extra bonuses. So the first section of this video is going to be the absolute basics. This is just just going to be things that every CSGO investor needs to know and it's kind of just how the lifeblood of the CSGO market works. So firstly we have intrinsic value and for a CS investor intrinsic value is like the most important thing ever. Basically what intrinsic value means it's essentially a way to gauge how much an item is actually worth. And the reason I say that is because a big thing that you're going to be looking for when choosing a good investment in CS is looking for items that are undervalued. You can say that the Phoenix case is undervalued because something like the Op Asimov that's inside of the Phoenix case is proportionally much more expensive compared to the case value. Now just because something is undervalued does not necessarily mean that it's a good investment there's no guarantee that something can actually live up to its intrinsic value in a short period of time, but generally speaking, that is something that you can go off of. Now, intrinsic value is also important for many other reasons. For example, it also helps to explain why items go up and go down in a lot of cases. A good example recently is the Stockholm and Antwerp sticker capsules and stickers as a whole. They had a much higher intrinsic value, but unfortunately, once Paris was released, the intrinsic value of those items went down a lot because Paris introduced a competitive and much cheaper alternative to the Stockholm and Antwerp stickers. And with its intrinsic value decrease, the value on the market also went down. Similarly, intrinsic value can work in the upward direction as well. For example, if Paris stickers were absolutely terrible, basically another Berlin 2019 iteration, then Stockholm and Antwerp would have risen a lot because they wouldn't be competing with Paris and the skepticism in the market would have diminished. So the main way that intrinsic value can be changed after an item already exists on the market is mainly just with Valve updates. For example, with CS2, we're getting a large graphical overhaul, which is going to make a lot of items look a lot nicer, and therefore their intrinsic value should increase, and there will be a lot more players playing the game. So the overall demand for skins will also increase, which can also positively affect its intrinsic value. There are other minor corrections that happen here and there as well, but that's the main overall way that intrinsic value is changed. Of course, items also have a starting intrinsic value as well. For example, with the current Paris stickers, there's a few different factors that go into calculating their intrinsic value. One of the big ones is that they are currently infinitely available in the in-game store for a dollar per capsule. So the intrinsic value of the stickers is sort of tied to that price as well. And of course, you will see a shift in the price of those stickers, once the Paris sticker sale hits, because it will be cheaper to obtain them. A little bit of a long one, but it's a very important thing, so I wanted to try and get it well explained. The next CS investment basic is supply and demand. These are gigantic, very general blanket terms, of course, but both of them do play a role in the CSGO economy. They're very easy to understand. Basically, items have high supply or low supply and high demand or low demand, or they might fall somewhere in the middle. With the CS market, demand is the much more important factor. In certain circumstances, supply does come into play, of course, but overall demand is going to change the price of items a lot more than supply will. The CS economy is a demand-focused economy. It's not supply-focused. For example, the Op Dragon Lore is about 100 times more common than the XM Blaze Orange, but its price is basically 100 times higher as well, despite it being far more common because there's basically no demand for the XM Blaze Orange and there's a huge amount of demand for the Op Dragon Lore. And this happens all over the market, of course, as well. This is just one of the examples that I like to use because there are a lot of people that think that supply and demand are just linear with each other for the CS market, which is absolutely not true. And if you seriously invest for any period of time, you'll figure that out pretty quickly. Now, like I said, though, supply does come into play from time to time. For example, with cases and capsules, since they are not directly items that you're holding, like a knife or a sticker, supply becomes a little bit more important. But for example, even if a capsule has extremely high supply, if that capsule has very, very good looking stickers, 
stickers that a ton of people want. The unboxing rate is going to be extremely high on it and the supply will diminish very quickly so supply becomes a lot less of a factor. So to sum that up we have a demand driven economy and supply and demand are things to look out for and learn. Now for the next section of the video I want to talk about some don'ts. These are just big things to avoid doing when you're starting out investing. One of the big ones here is going to be direct buying items without using buy orders. Buy orders are an invaluable tool and can save you a ton of money overall when buying into an investment. They do take longer to fulfill of course but you should hopefully be holding your investments for a long period of time regardless so the amount of time that it takes for your buy order to fulfill shouldn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Not only will this make your initial investment a lot cheaper overall but it also of course increases your ROI which for those of you that are completely new to this that means return on investment. Your ROI will increase if you bought the items for a lot cheaper compared to somebody who bought them for their market value straight up. The second don't is one that seems very obvious but a lot of people fall for it all the time and that is panic selling. We saw a lot of panic selling with Stockholm and Antwerp once prices started to fall and that is definitely the wrong thing to do. In a lot of cases it's better to just dollar cost average which again for the complete beginners means buying something that you're already invested in at a lower price to make your average investment cost go down overall. Basically, it's averaging down. It's one of the things that I recommend to current Stockholm and Antwerp holders because the intrinsic value of those capsules and those stickers is still really high because of their craftability and how popular they actually are. It's just stifled a lot by the Paris hype currently. But in most cases, selling your investment instead of just holding it for a much longer period of time will almost always be the wrong choice. There are certain cases where selling your investment is the right idea. For example, if you bought into Copenhagen Flame stickers recently, you definitely wanted to sell that on the peak because it was all hype and the prices were going to come back down very quickly. And finally, the last don't is going to be applying real world economic models to CS. I see this happening a lot right now because there's a lot of stupid people coming from the crypto community because CS is starting to make a lot of money for people and they're applying economic models and concepts from the crypto and, and general stock investing communities that simply put don't apply to CS. Now I can't really go too in depth here without wasting too much time, but essentially the reason that you don't want to apply economic models to CS is because it's a video game. It's not a stock market. If someone wants to send the price of AUG store minimal wares super high just because it's funny, then they will, and they actually have. A lot of these prices are just simply based on the fact that people like the items. There's no support levels or buy flags or candlesticks or cup and handle patterns. Sometimes items just go up because people like them and it's just that simple. So try to stay away from most of the real world economic models and just stick to thinking of CS investing as what do people like the most. Now moving on to a more advanced section here, we're going to start with the multiplication effect. Essentially what the multiplication effect is, is it's buying a large quantity of something in order to take advantage of small rises and gaining a lot of profit off of those small rises. So for example, cases are a big one that people utilize the multiplication effect with because for example, if a case rises three cents, you're profiting three cents on every single case that you bought, not just one case. Compare this to if you were to instead spend all of that money on like a Mao's Stockholm Hollow. Even if that Mao's Stockholm Hollow rises, it may not net you as much profit as if you were to buy something in a much larger quantity. So that's something to consider when purchasing investments. You don't necessarily just want to buy something that's super expensive. You may want to spread everything out to make your profits a little bit more elastic. Now the next advanced tip is with specialization versus diversification. I've seen a lot of noob CSGO investing YouTube channels that don't really know what they're talking about, essentially telling everybody to just do diversification because they hear the term with the general stock market. But that's not always the case. Specialization is a very good thing to do as well. Diversifying your investments does make things safer for you. But with CS, we sometimes have markets that are essentially just upward permanently. And specialization in those cases will make you a lot more money. Again, for the absolute noobs, specialization is where you specialize and buy one very specific thing, whereas diversification is buying a large quantity of different things and casting a wide net. And finally, the last advanced tip that I wanted to touch on that I thought was really important is choosing the best fit. This actually happens a lot more in CS investing than you might think. Take for example the current Paris capsules. The mouse hollow isn't in every single Paris capsule, it's only in one of them. And generally speaking, that's going to be the hollow that most people chase because it will likely command the highest price. So as a result, the so as a result, the unboxing on that capsule will likely be a lot higher than on the other two capsules. And long term, the capsule price should also be a lot higher. This can be seen as well with the Stockholm capsules. The Legend sticker capsule was worth about three dollars when the Challenger sticker capsule was actually worth about twelve. And keep in mind, these were both available in the in-game store for the same price when Stockholm was ongoing. When you have stuff like majors or operation collections, there's generally going to be something that is more demanded and is a better idea long term than others. And specializing in to that best item will net you more profit overall. And now for some general basic tips to get out of the way. I would track your investments with spreadsheets, 
Personally, I find this kind of annoying, but it can actually be kind of cathartic and fun in some cases. It also helps you know how much you actually bought investments for. That's something that I actually end up forgetting because I don't like using spreadsheets too much. It also helps you keep your price targets and selling goals in mind, so you don't accidentally hold on to something for too long. And the only other tip that I really wanted to touch on here was making sure that you're using third-party marketplaces when you're buying items that are going to be a lot cheaper than just buying on the Steam market. Examples of these are like Buff163, but right now, due to them not accepting new American customers, you may have to find someone to essentially broker deals for you on Buff, but there's plenty of websites out there. Skinport is another one. So make sure to take a look around all different types of sites and find which ones have the cheapest prices for you. Now speaking of sites, here are some sites that I love using as a CS investor myself and sites that I just think are extremely useful in general. First we have the Esport Fire Index. Essentially Esport Fire has created a large amount of indexes. These are ways to view the market in a more general aspect rather than just looking at specific items. Indexes help you get a good idea of how much the market is up or down overall. It's important to look at the general market in a lot of cases and so using indexes, especially the ones provided by Esport Fire which are fantastic and there are many to look at, is going to be a good idea. Next is CSGO Sticker Search. This one is not going to be as important, but if you're wanting to buy some of those really expensive stickers but can't afford to buy them unapplied, you can use CSGO Sticker Search to check the Steam market for sticker crafts instead that may end up being a lot cheaper and actually may end up being profitable. Many friends of mine that have used CSGO Sticker Search have gotten extremely good snipes because they've been good at checking CSGO Sticker Search and searching the market. However, if you're brand new, I would not recommend doing this because you will have to learn how stickers actually affect the price of a weapon, and that's actually very complicated and will take a while to learn. Next up is Multi-Cell Generator. This is very good for selling a large amount of items at once. You'll be selling them on the Steam Market, so you will be taking the Steam Market tax, of course. But for example, if you have like a ton of 4 cent items that you just want to all sell at once, Multi-Cell Generator can be a great way to do that. It can help for cleaning out your storage units if you just have a bunch of junk in them. Generally, it's a good way to make sure that your inventory stays clean and organized. And the final thing is actually not a website, it's something that you will have to download. And I can understand if you're worried about that, but I have personally downloaded this application and it's completely fantastic. Fantastic. It's a storage unit mover, but beyond that it also shows you the general value of your storage units and your overall inventory, so it's sort of a good little hub to have just to track your items. You'll have to download this directly from GitHub, but it is trusted. I'll have links to all of these websites and the storage mover in the description below. Now our penultimate category for this video is going to be avoiding scams. The first tip I have for avoiding scams is to make sure you bookmark trusted links. When you get onto the correct Buff website or the correct CS Money website or whatever website you might be using, make sure you bookmark those websites to make sure that you have the direct link and aren't going to be clicking on an API scam. Speaking of API scams, make sure that when you are doing cash trades with people, you include an item on both sides of the trade. It can be just a trading card, for example. This will make sure that you can't get API scammed. And similarly to bookmarking trusted links, make sure that you follow trusted cash traders and balance sellers on Twitter. For example, when I buy balance on Buff, I like to use Mitao. He's great. He responds extremely quickly to DMs, so I just wanted to give him sort of a shout out and also just as an example of a trusted cash trader that you can follow on Twitter to make sure you're not following accidental scam accounts, to make sure that you're not accidentally following scam accounts. And finally, the last section for this video is going to be spotting frauds. This is a really important one right now, especially with CS2 coming out. There have been a lot of new CSGO investment YouTube channels popping up that don't actually have the knowledge behind them that they need. So there's a few different ways that you can spot these, but one of the big ones, for example, is going to be checking if they're trying to sell you something getting solid good investment tips is going to come from a place where the person isn't actually trying to make money off of you for example every single investment tip that I give is absolutely completely free till the end of time all of my videos will always be free none of them will ever be behind a paywall you can literally DM me on Twitter or discord anytime you want and ask for some direction and I can help you out in fact I do that all the time on Twitter unfortunately there are some bad actors that actually are selling tips like on patreon for example and these are not people that you want to listen to because they're trying to gain off of your ignorance another big one is if they're contradicting them themselves. I've seen a lot of these investment YouTubers make a claim in a video and then go into the comment section and say something completely different. A person that's contradicting themselves is not very confident in what they're saying in the first place, so make sure to watch out for that. Big keywords that I'm seeing a lot right now is guaranteed profit and safe investments. No investment is ever truly safe, and there is never actually guaranteed profit on everything. So if you see these keywords, it's usually a good idea to avoid those videos or those people. And finally, the last and biggest way to spot a fraud is if they have a lack of earned value themselves. So for example, if someone's trying to give you 
investment tips, but they only have like a $14 inventory, then clearly they haven't been very good at investing themselves and clearly don't have the knowledge to back it up. So that's going to be all my tips for spotting frauds. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really hoping that some of these tips helped you out. Tried to give some advanced things here and there and tried to also give the basics. I made a big Google document to include everything that I wanted to talk about, but I guarantee that I missed some things as well. So if you have any further questions, be sure to just ask in the comment section below or on Twitter or on Discord. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Discord, you can do that with the links in the description below. Also subscribe to the channel for the best CSGO investment tips anywhere else on YouTube, coming from a place of someone who's actually made quite a lot. Like the video if it helped you out, and be sure to check out Skins Monkey. Thanks again, guys. See y'all next time. Peace.